Subnautica has intrigued me ever since its alpha release in 2014. However, after disappointing experiences with other open world survival games, I never really gave it a full chance. But since its full release in 2018, the game has received high praise by many gamers, and I've wondered, is it really as good as they say? Hey there deep sea explorers, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing my review of Subnautica in 2023, exploring whether or not it deserves the title of a masterpiece. If you're new here, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Without further ado, let's grab our oxygen tanks and dive right in. Developed by Unknown Worlds, Subnautica is an open world survivor game that plunges you into the depths of underwater exploration. The game begins inside a life pod, watching a huge ship, the Aurora, crash land on an alien planet called 4546B. I'm attempting a controlled descent. Upon awakening in the life pod, a raging fire spreads and survival mode kicks in. Players are then to equip the fire extinguisher and put out the flames to prevent any further damage. <laughs> With the immediate threat extinguished, players can ascend up the ladder to view their surroundings. Once you pop your head out of the pod, all you can see is a massive ocean stretching out in every direction. No land in sight, just endless waves, with the Aurora crash landed in the distance. This is likely to lead players to feel a deep sense of isolation and vulnerability. Without any land in view, the only other option is to head back down the ladder and into the ocean. Submerging into the sea beneath the pod, first impressions are captivated by the stunning beauty of the surroundings. The game features realistic water effects, vibrant colours and detailed environments that truly bring the ocean depths to life. The visuals are even more impressive at night. The bioluminescent plants cast a glow, transforming the surroundings into a stunning underwater spectacle reminiscent of the enchanting scenes in Avatar 2. Occasionally, there are graphical glitches or popping effects, however, they are generally minor and do not significantly impact gameplay. Overall, the graphics hold up quite well even with the current games today. As you survey your surroundings, it becomes evident that the creatures inhabiting the area in Subnautica is unlike anything you have ever seen before. Fish that look like boomerangs or the gasopods with its face all gas mask like, their unique and extraordinary appearances made it abundantly clear that this underwater world was far from the familiar ocean we know. This leads to players experiencing a sense of curiosity and fascination as they observe the unfamiliar creatures. However, there is also a feeling of unease due to the limited knowledge about their behaviour, characteristics and environment they inhabit. As players take their first dip into the sea, they are presented with a task to break a limestone in order to collect resources essential for your survival. The resources gathered help you to craft items needed using the fabricator back in the life pod. When it comes to crafting in Subnautica, realism takes a back seat, but boy does it bring the visual appeal. The fabricator's interface and animations are like a dance of intuition and engagement, making the crafting process a delightful joyride. It's as if the fabricator itself is saying, hey there, let's create some epic stuff together. In terms of the UI, it seems to strike a balance between functionality and immersion. The UI seamlessly integrates with the game's underwater environment, enhancing the sense of being in a vast and mysterious world. With its minimalistic approach, it allows players to focus on exploration and survival without unnecessary distractions, also making it easier for players to navigate the meanness, manage inventory and interact with objects. However, it is worth noting that in certain situations, the UI may present a lot of information at once, which can be overwhelming for new players trying to grasp the game's mechanics. Kind of like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded while riding a unicycle. That being said, once you become familiar with the user interface, crafting becomes much easier. Once players have crafted a repair tool, they are able to repair the LifePod's radio communication system, to which you are able to then receive distress signals of other LifePod locations. After the radio stops broadcasting the distress signal, a beacon will appear for you to investigate. Upon reaching the location, you are met with a disheartening sight. The LifePod is in ruins, and there are no signs of any survivors. The only thing that is left behind is a blueprint and a PDA. 
The game uses life pods to serve as key points of interest as a means to provide insight to the survivor's story with their PDAs. As players discover more life pods and unravel clues about the game's narrative, it deepens the sense of solitude. Something else that players uncover while traveling from beacon to beacon is the Degassi crew. The Degassi crew is a group of survivors in Subnautica who crash landed on the planet before the Aurora. The Degassi crew's story provides a rich narrative element to the game. Through their audio logs and PDAs found in their bases, players learn about their crash landing, survival struggles, and encounters with the planet's unique ecosystem. These logs gradually unveil the mysteries of Planet 4546b, its alien life forms, and the events that happened before your arrival. Through learning about the crew, hints and gives clues about the need to venture deeper into the ocean to uncover more secrets and progress further into the game's story. Approximately two hours into the game, players then receive another distress signal from your digital assistant indicating that the Aurora is in a critical state. Shortly after, a catastrophic explosion occurs, causing radiation to spread throughout the surrounding area. You are then entrusted with the vital mission of entering the wreckage of the Aurora to repair the damaged sections where the radiation is leaking from. This introduces players to learn and utilize various tools, fostering their problem-solving skills as they explore the ship. For example, finding codes or clues in other PDAs to unlock new areas, or using a propulsion cannon to remove objects from a doorway in order to collect resources and scan fragments. Players will come across fragments scattered throughout the game world and can be found by exploring wrecks, caves, and other points of interest. This is a way the game encourages players to explore more areas. By collecting fragments, you are able to analyze them in the fabricator or mobile vehicle bay to unlock new blueprint recipes and enhance your survival. These blueprints enable the construction of essential items, such as upgraded tools, habitat modules, and vehicles. Vehicles in Subnautica are one of its key features and offers three different types, the Seamoth, Prawnsuit, and Cyclops. The Seamoth is the smallest and most maneuverable vehicle and allows players to navigate tight spaces and explore shallow depths. It offers great versatility, but it's important to note that players are not invulnerable. Hostile creatures can still cause damage and even destroy the vehicle, which helps encourage players to make smarter decisions to avoid wandering into dangerous areas. Then there's the Prawn Suit. This exosuit offers superior protection against hostile creatures and allows players to seamlessly navigate both land and sea environments. Equipped with versatile arms, the prawn suit can either fend off threats or be upgraded with drilling capabilities for resource extraction. Additionally, with the grappling hook upgrade, it enhances mobility, providing even greater flexibility during exploration. Though do not think it is a replacement for the Seamoth to taxi yourself around quickly, as this suit is very slow in comparison to it. And finally the Cyclops, which is a massive customizable submarine that serves as a mobile base for players. It offers significantly more storage space than the other two vehicles, and has multiple rooms where players can craft and also grow food. The Cyclops allows players to explore deeper areas of the ocean, which is mostly used in the later part of the game. However, this submarine is not indestructible and can be damaged by large creatures, meaning you will have to be strategic with your directions and the upgrades you choose to use. Each of these vehicles offers unique capabilities and affects how players use them in different situations. One of the things that stands out to players in this game is the music. The soundtrack in Subnautica is atmospheric and immersive, and features a mix of ambient, electronic, and orchestral compositions that capture the sense of exploring into the unknown and really does set the vibe. The game has different biomes, and as you explore these biomes, the music dynamically changes. Certain areas with certain plants and creatures have their own unique soundtrack that perfectly captures the essence of that environment, which in turn keeps players engaged. It's not just the music that catches the player's attention, but also the sounds emitted by the creatures around. The small marine life such as the peepers make a series of high-pitched chirps and clicks, or the gasopods which emit deep, rumbling sounds accompanied by occasional gas releases. <laughs> 
Mix this with the ambient underwater sounds, like the creaking of the ocean floor, distant echoes, and the gentle flows of currents really give you a sense of tranquility. Don't get me wrong, there are also sounds that make you think twice about getting too close, like the stalkers, which emit a mix of growls, roars, and occasional metallic clanking sounds as they interact with their environment. And then there are the leviathans. What makes some of the creatures truly terrifying is that you often hear their ominous sounds before catching a glimpse of them, intensifying the suspense and evoking even greater fear when they finally come into view. Creatures like the Reaper is scary as it is already just by looking at it, but that deep, guttural growl helps build up the tension for the players, the calm before the storm. Overall, the diverse range of sounds from the eerie calls of distant creatures to the creaking of the shipwrecks make it a memorable auditory playthrough. As for the need for more and more resources, you find yourself building a few structures. Like many other open world survival games, base building is a key feature. The unique underwater setting allows players to construct bases beneath the ocean's surface, a feature not commonly found in other open world survival games. With the Builder tool, the process of crafting a base works pretty much the same way as the Fabricator, which again, not the most realistic approach, but is visually pleasing and satisfying to construct. You can create multi-purpose rooms, corridors, and add different modules like Fabricators, Storage Lockers, Power Generators, and more. Building and maintaining a base provides players with a sense of immersion. Just being able to view the ocean through the glass enhances the feeling of survival and progression as you witness your base grow and evolve. However, one aspect of base building in Subnautica that detracts from the immersion is the lack of ladder climbing animations. Instead of visually climbing the ladder, the character instantly teleports up and down. Also, the placement of foundations can be a bit like floating islands in the sky, defying the laws of physics. I also personally would have liked to have seen more customization options when it comes to decoration, but despite these nitpicks, base building remains a rewarding and engaging aspect. Oh my God! In terms of the main story, Subnautica's storyline is meticulously crafted, weaving a captivating narrative that beautifully complements its survival gameplay. It successfully blends elements of science fiction, adventure, and environmental storytelling to create an immersive experience. The voice acting is great, which brings the characters to life by conveying emotions and personalities, making the story even more compelling. It's coming from the building. Change course. Set thrusters to full. This sets Subnautica apart with its strong emphasis on storytelling. Upon completing Subnautica, the game extends beyond its initial storyline, providing players with various modes to choose from, ensuring continued engagement and exploration. For the daring players, there's the hardcore mode where you only have one life. On the other hand, creative mode allows you to freely explore Subnautica without the need to manage food or water, removing the survival aspect. It's a game that keeps on giving even after you've finished it. In addition to its gameplay modes, Subnautica goes above and beyond by offering VR support, allowing players to embark on a whole new level of bravery and immersion as they experience the depths of Subnautica in virtual reality. While Subnautica, like any other game, is not without its flaws, it's worth highlighting that the developers actively listen to gamers' feedback and demonstrate a strong commitment to continuous improvement. For example, in the recent Steam Deck update, the devs fixed occasional black screens on game start. Also, they added the ability to pin materials for crafting specific items. These updates help address bugs and enhance the overall gaming experience. Subnautica sets a new standard for what open world survival games should strive to be. It offers a unique and unparalleled gaming experience that left me thoroughly satisfied upon completion. Its captivating storytelling truly immersed me in its world, igniting a strong desire to overcome the challenges and escape the hardships I faced throughout the game. This level of narrative depth is unparalleled in any other open world survival game I've encountered. Because of this, after investing countless hours into the game, I can confidently say that it really is a true masterpiece, and if you are into open world survivor games, then I recommend you giving Subnautica a try. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, comment down below on what you think about Subnautica. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more content in the future, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.